All right, question number 43 is from heat and the question comes from thermal expansion and more precisely the thermal stress and strain. The pressure that has to be applied to the ends of a steel wire of length 10 cm. So there is a steel wire of length 10 cm. To keep its length constant when its temperature is raised by 100 degrees centigrade. It is that the temperature has been raised by 100 degree and if left free this thing would expand and we need to calculate the pressure that has to be applied so that the length would be constant. Quite obviously the stress, thermal stress which would be generated would be equals to the strain into Young's modulus. So this is the stress developed when the rod is not allowed to expand and quite obviously the same would be the value of pressure and strain is alpha delta theta into y. Alpha for steel is given, Young's modulus for steel is given, delta theta is given on calculation that would easily yield option number B. Proceeding forward, let's see question number 44, which is from laws of motion and framed from the topic friction. A block of mass m is placed on a surface with a vertical cross section given by y equals to x cubed by 6. So it could be a plane, a curved plane whose cross section comes in this form y equals to x cubed by 6. The coefficient of friction has been given and we need to calculate the maximum height above the ground at which block can be placed without slipping. Quite obviously that goes for the definition of angle of repose. Say the block is kept here and if I draw a tangent and this angle is theta and let me say Theta is the angle at which the block starts slipping. So quite obviously, theta falls in the definition of angle of repose, which is mu equals to tan theta. And tan theta obviously would be dy by dx. And dy by dx would be equals to x square by 2, because 3x square by 6. And we could see the value of mu is 0 0.5. So quite obviously, the value of x comes out to be 1. So x is the maximum horizontal distance from the origin where the block can be kept without slipping. But the question demands the vertical height. And that's quite simple. Plug the value of x here. You'll get y as 1 by 6. And here goes option number b. Question number 45 is about heat transfer and the question has been set from the topic conduction. As clear in the figure, copper, brass and steel. These are the three rods forming a Y shape and the ends maintained at 100 degrees, 0 degrees, 0 degree. Area of cross section of each rod is 4 cm square. Length of copper, brass and steel is given. Thermal conductivity is given all in CGS units. Everything is in CGS and even the option has been asked in CGS. And we got to find rate of heat flow through copper. So first of all, going for the continuity of heat. If I assume theta as the temperature of the junction, let me assume incoming heat here and outgoing heat there. So using the rate of heat flow Ka delta theta by L since it's a uniform rod d theta by dx can be supposed as delta theta by L. Let me start with the copper one K 0 0.92 area A I'm assuming heat in this direction so that's 100 minus theta by length of copper which is 46 this is the heat that's flowing in this direction and we'll assume the outgoing heat 
through brass and steel. So then comes for the brass. For the brass, K is 0 0.26, A, and the temperature difference, theta minus 0, and length of brass is 13. Plus, K of steel is 0 0.12, A, the temperature difference, theta minus 0, and the length is 12. Easy calculation. And when you do all this thing, you will get theta as 40 degrees centigrade. But the question demands rate of heat flow through copper. And if you realize, this itself is the rate of heat flow through copper. You plug the value of theta as 40 and area, you'll finally get 4.8 calorie per second. Question number 46 is again from rotation. There is a hollow cylinder of mass M and a cord and a block being attached to the cord, both having same mass. If no slipping anywhere, then acceleration of the mass M, we got to find the acceleration of this mass. So first of all, this as T, this as Mg. For the block, if I take the system as block, I'm going to get mg minus t equals to ma. That's equation number one. There is no slipping. And if the string and the cylinder together is taken as a system, obviously the friction part would get cancelled out. So if I want to write the torque equation, the Hinz reactions will not be offering any torque because the support reaction is acting right here and mg of the cylinder is also acting here. So if I write the torque equation, I'll get T into R is for the hollow cylinder is I which is mR square into alpha and no slipping. So alpha can be written as A by R. That's equation number two. On solving these two, you'll be getting A equals to G by two. So that was question number 46.